Isn't God's presence sweet? I'm just going to ask that, uh, that we're just going to continue on in our worship. And in our, in our worship is not just about singing. It's about giving. It's about giving back to the Lord. And, and we have an opportunity now. If you're on the, the left side of the, the chairs there, I ask that you would reach down and, and grab that green bucket. And uh, you can go ahead and take a seat. I'd like to tell you a story about a, a restaurant kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And this restaurant was there, and it was mainly like a trucker stop, and the guys would come and, and you know, kind of, kind of a little bit more of a rough kind of restaurant. And the owner was needing a new bus boy. And he was told about this young man. They said, you know what, he, he is a fantastic worker. He works really, really hard. And, and the owner goes, okay, so, so tell me a little bit about him. And he goes, well, this young man, his name is Stevie. And Stevie has Down syndrome. Now, the owner, at first, he, he was reluctant because he thought, man, I don't know. He said, some of my customers just may not treat him well. But something on his heart tugged and said, no, no, give him the opportunity. So he, he hired Stevie on, and within a week, Stevie was the best employee he had. Everybody at the, at the restaurant loved him. All the staff loved him. And as months and, and weeks went by, people just grew to adopt Stevie into their family. He was just that kind of a person, and he worked so hard. But one day, Stevie didn't show up to work, and they didn't know what happened. So the owner called and, and finally got a hold of his mom and, and said, hey, what happened to Stevie? And that day, Stevie had been rushed to, to a hospital and had to have a, 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 heart valve, a heart valve replaced. And so he was going to be gone. He was going to be gone for months and months. And as the truckers continued to come in over the next days and weeks, they, they all were asking, where's Stevie at? So they told him and said, you know, Stevie... He had, he had some heart problems, so they had to fix this. So one of the customers one day said, man, how are they going to pay for that? I know Stevie's mom's a widow. I know that she's barely making it on Social Security. And Stevie's income was the only thing that was getting them through. So this lady, she left a, a note. She left a napkin, and inside of the napkin was three $20 bills. And on top of it, it said, something for Stevie. Now, before the waitress got to the table to clean it up, another customer had already sat down, and they saw that, and they said, what's this about? So they told the story. That customer wrote on a napkin and gave two $50 bills. This continued on for weeks and weeks. And in three months' time, Stevie was finally going to be ready to come back to work. So Stevie and his mom came to work that day, and that, re that restaurant that day was a little bit fuller than normal. People were there. They were excited to see Stevie, and the owner thought he was going to be uh, kind of funny, and, and so he, he had this table, and he just stacked it full of cups and plates and everything that you can imagine, and just kind of slightly tilted and off-center, and, and Stevie comes up to this, and, and, and the boss says, hey, and he says it in a stern voice, hey, I want you to clean this up. Stevie goes over, he picks the first one up, and he sees under the cup, he sees the napkin, something for Stevie. He sees $40. Okay, he puts it aside, and another napkin, something for Stevie, $100. Now the owner over here, he's, you know, smiling and, and just having a good time, and he leans over to Stevie's mom and says, there's over $10,000 in cash and checks. Stevie looks back at his mom and is like, Mom, we're going to be able to make it. I tell you that story today because it is so much better to give than receive. The Word of God tells us that we are to give joyfully, that we are to give hilariously. And so I just encourage you, give to the Lord because He has given you so much. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to pass that, that offering bucket by. God, we thank you for blessing us so much. 
And God, we ask that as we give, Lord, use this for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to watch a short little clip about promise keepers now. this prisoner and say to me son stop fighting a fight it's already been won and I am redeemed you set me free so I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I'm redeemed All my life I have been called unworthy We've got to expand our, our audience. We've got to go after women. We've got to go after young adults. And we did that only to discover that was a mistake. The Promise Keeper's brand, the Promise Keeper's anointing is for ministry to men. That's what God's called Promise Keepers to do. We've now recognized that was not the right thing to do. So when I say we're back, we're back to focusing on ministry to men. That's what Promise Keepers has been. That's what Promise Keepers is going to be about. If I were to look five years down the road to see what Promise Keepers is going to look like, I see arenas, yes, stadiums filled with men who are being called out to be godly men, who are stepping up the plate to be leaders in their home, leaders in their church, leaders in their community, godly men who are recognizing that we need a transformation in America and around the world like never before, and men must step up to the plate. I believe it's going to happen because it's a God thing. God is going to revive the church. He's going to do it through men who are called out to step up to the plate. So over the last few weeks, we've really been pushing this. You get the little cards in your chair every week. So men, this is your time. Come on out. Let me encourage you if you're like, well, I don't know. I don't want to go by myself. Well, bring a friend. Go together. Partner up with somebody. It will change your life. All right. How many of you ready to get in the word of the Lord today? Let's pray. God, as we come to you today, we ask that you would just open up our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. How many have ever had a really bad day? I'm talking the kind of day where you wake up and you feel like you were hit by a truck when you woke up. You wake up, you, you go into the kitchen, and you get your bowl out, you pour some cereal in it, you go to the refrigerator, and there's no milk. If you're like me, you've probably tried this next thing at least once. So you go, and you're like, oh, I don't have time to make anything else. Okay, so I'm going to go, and, and you put water in your cereal. So you eat this cereal, and it is just nasty. Any of you ever done this before? Oh, you're lying if you, no, we all have, I think. Anyways, so you do this and it's gross. And now you're like trying to find a cookie or something just to, to wash the nastiness out of your mouth. So then you get in a car, you're going to, to work and you're driving on, you know, the road and it's a 55 speed limit and the car in front of you just happens to be going 35 and there's no way around them. 
And so you are frustrated. You get to your work. You're 10 minutes late. Your boss is waiting there for you. And the, and the boss says, where have you been? You are late. I am citing you. You are going on record. This is your last chance. If this ever happens again, you're fired. You go to work that day. You do whatever you got to do. And everything just kind of seems to take a little bit longer. The easy things are all hard and you, you, you go out to your car after work thinking, hey, it's, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to go home. I'll be able to relax, put everything behind me. You go out to your car. You turn the key. It doesn't start. It just happens to be 100 degrees outside. Your battery is now dead. So now you're searching around trying to find somebody who's able to jump your car. You jump your car. You get home, and you, are just, you walk in the door and... You just like want to go straight for the couch. Any of this ever happened? You want to go straight to that couch and you just want to like fall asleep there for the rest of the day. Your spouse comes to you and says, honey, I've got bad news. So your spouse says, you know, they've been making cutbacks at, at, at my work. Today I got fired. So now all the things like, how am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to do this? How am I going to get milk and bread and eggs for the kids? How am I going to do all that? And then five minutes later, the phone rings. This is one of those days where you wonder if you should answer. You answer the phone. Let's say it's your mom. And your mom says, dad's just been rushed to the hospital. He's having heart attack symptoms. This is a bad day. If any of you ever had a bad day like that, where just everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong, I think we've all had a bad day, and I think that we often wonder, is God punishing me? Have any of you ever thought that? Is God punishing me? Did I do something wrong? Is God trying to teach me some sort of a lesson? Or why does stuff like this happen? Why doesn't God just step in and and stop it all from happening? I don't know what your situation is today. I could probably guess. We live in an area where finances are terrible. We live in an area where a lot of people lost their jobs, have lost their homes, have have been put in, in, in bad situations. Maybe you've been trying with that bank for for months or maybe even years to get that mortgage refinanced and they just will not budge. Maybe you're here today and you have a a situation in your family. Maybe there's some issues going on in your marriage or maybe you have a rebellious child and you don't know how to connect with them. You, you, you You just feel overwhelmed. Or maybe you've gotten that phone call about somebody having cancer or disease, or, 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 or something along those lines. I'm here to tell you today that no matter what the trial is, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the problem is, that God is the answer. If you have your Bible today, I'm going to ask that you would open up to James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. And this is what it says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers... Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Let's go back to the beginning part of this. Consider it pure joy. Really? Really? I'm supposed to consider it joy when I lost my job? I'm supposed supposed to consider it joy when I get the phone call that somebody has been rushed to the hospital? I'm supposed to consider it joy? What we're supposed to do is no matter what the circumstance is be joyful because we're blessed by God no matter what. You know... My son, Dominic, the little cute guy that runs around here sometimes, he just turned one this past Thursday. I know, it's been a year. It's been crazy. It's gone by so, so fast. This year has been a year full of firsts, okay? And I'm not just talking about firsts for Dominic. 
first for daddy. Okay, I, I, I did not have a lot of experience going into this uh, father role. So this year I changed my first diaper. This year I changed my first poopy diaper. <sighs> this year I got peed on. This year I got thrown up on. And you know, you go through the normal things like your child not sleeping at nighttime and, and just crying uncontrollably and you can't figure out what's wrong and, and you're delirious because you haven't slept in a few days. Now I say those things not saying like, oh man, like those are the worst things ever. No, I say those things because I learned something from those experiences. I wouldn't trade those experiences. Now, I'm not saying that I'm happy that I have to change poopy diapers because that is not fun. <laughs> it is not fun by any, by any means. Not fun. If you like doing that, something's wrong with you. <laughs> Anyways, going through those experiences, those, those difficulties with my son has given me opportunity to love my son even more. Going through those hard things with him, it just gives me that, that, that opportunity to say, I love you so much more. Because if I didn't love you, I would not be changing poopy diapers. You know, sometimes when we face those difficulties in life, it makes the good things that are coming so much better. And you look for those moments that God is just shining down on you. And I'm going to let you into my family today, and, I, and I'm going to just show you a little clip of one of those good moments, and this is called, Do You Love? Do you love Daddy? <laughs> Do you love Gigi? <laughs> what about Poppy? <laughs> what about Grandma? <laughs> what about Papa? <gasps> What about Papa? What about Daddy? What about Jesus? What about God? And what about little Domino? What about Mommy? Yes, I have the cutest son in the world. I know, I know. Okay, let's go back to the scriptures now. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. You notice that it doesn't say, if you face a trial. Or just, you know, you might face one trial in your life. No, no, no. This isn't an if. This is going to happen. And it says, whenever you face trials, you got to be joyful. It goes on to say that you are not only going to face one trial, you're going to face many trials of different kinds. This is sometimes hard, hard to swallow. We go, I don't know. I don't want to go through any more trials. I've had enough, share. But it's important. It's important. Because when we go through those trials, it develops perseverance. I know what you're asking, well, what is perseverance? Do I really want that? Is this really needed? Perseverance. Perseverance is patience. Perseverance is endurance. Perseverance is being steadfast. It's being able to trust in no matter the circumstance. Imagine that you are standing in the ocean and the waves are crashing against you. Perseverance is being able to stay strong, to stay anchored in the Lord. That's what perseverance is about. Perseverance. You see, the situations you may be going through today, even though they're so difficult and you don't know how you're going to get through them, these situations are preparing you for what's tomorrow. And if you don't go through it today, you're not going to be ready for what's tomorrow. Because it's my son's birthday this week, 
I'm going to let you in my family a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to show you another uh, video here. And this is Dominic at four months old. What you didn't see is the 45 seconds that I took off before that where he was screaming his head off and just figuring out, why am I laying here and I can't move? Why can't I get over? And he's screaming and kicking and finally he does it. He does it. You know the experiences, the situations that you go through aren't going to be easy. But they're so important to us. Because they're preparing us for what God has. God may be teaching you something today in your circumstance. But are you listening? Are you watching? Are you saying, okay, God, show me what I need to do? Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, did God cause that bad thing to happen or that trial or that situation to happen? I'm not God, okay? So I'm not going to answer on your specific situation. But what I can tell you is there is plenty of sin in this world. And sometimes it's not even your sin, it's somebody else's sin that causes a chain reaction which affects you. So did God cause it to happen? Probably not. But can God use those opportunities, those situations for you to grow, for you to mature, for you to develop a stronger faith in Him? Absolutely. You see, because when we go through these difficult situations, it brings an opportunity for spiritual maturity. Remember, what you go through today is preparing you for what's tomorrow. Let's watch another video about Dominic. You can do it. Come on. Good job. Good job, buddy. Good job! That's so good! That's so good at it! Look at that! As you can see, this kind of crying, and that's kind of a, a pattern for my son when he's going through something new. This is kind of what happens to us, too, with our relationship with God. When we're going through something, we kind of kick and scream and say, no, no, I don't want to do this. But God has something in store for you. You see, because my son, if he wouldn't have learned how to roll over and develop those muscles, if he wouldn't have learned how to sit up and to crawl, he never would have been able to take his first steps. He didn't enjoy his first steps by any means. But. He was learning and growing because God has something more for him. The situations that you're facing today, you are learning and growing. Do you trust God? Do you trust that God has your back no matter what and that he can use whatever you're going through to bring glory to his name? Let's look at that scripture again. Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. At first glance, we could look at this scripture and, and we could look at it. Okay, this is God just saying, all right, you need to... For all the bad situations that you go through, you need to just grow from that. You need to pull yourself up and, and just grow from that. That's kind of, sort of, not right. Okay? This is what it's really saying. You see, God isn't wanting you necessarily to pick yourself up. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there, self-help books, CDs, seminars, all those kind of things that people, you know, pour millions of dollars into. No, 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 no. This isn't about self-help. This is about God help. 
This isn't about you picking yourself up. This is about you reaching your arms out to your father and saying, I need you. Please help me. This is what we have to learn. This is what we have to continue to remember that we need to stretch out and say, Dad, I'm right here. Please help me. Help me. Help me to learn. Help me to do what you want me to do. You see, our trials point us towards God. Oftentimes when we go through something, our, our first thing is we, we go, oh, we look at ourselves and be like, well, how can I fix this? No, no. What can God do in this situation? Because God has the answers. I have something called the bump test. Imagine this nice little plastic bottle is you. Inside is a clear liquid. And what's inside represents what's inside of you. This represents your faith. This represents your relationship with the Lord, all those kind of things. I call this the bump test because when we go through life, we get bumped. We go through those situations. We go through those obstacles, and we get hit, and stuff comes out. Stuff comes out. And we go, okay, well, what came out? I joke with students sometimes saying, I can tell you what's going on in your life spiritually. Just come over here and let me stomp on your toe. When we get bumped or stepped on or whatever, what comes out of your mouth? What are the first words that come out of your mouth? Is it bleepity bleep or is it ow? God, help me, please. You see, it's the bump test that we all need to remember. We need to remember what's inside of us. Is it Christ or is it me? Is is it just the selfishness that I have or is it God, help me. Make your will my will, Lord. I want to follow you. In James 1.20, or sorry, James 1.12, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. He will receive the crown of life. What does that mean? That means the fullness of life. It means joy. It means blessings. It means trusting in God. It means that no matter what you're facing, that you know God is in control and he can use that situation for his good. I think the one thing I I think God really wants you to know today is that God's love never fails. God's love never fails. We're going to look look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 through 7 and we're going to put that on the screen for you. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 through 7. It says in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The situations that you're going through What are they supposed to result in? Praise, glory, honor. Because when we go through that, are we looking to God or are we looking to ourselves? And I know some of you are saying, well, how 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 can I how can that be true? How 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 does being sick or how does dying, how does that give glory to God? In college, I had a professor whose name was Don Baldwin. And when I got to college and I had a class with him and, and, and he was teaching this class and the name of the class was just so interesting that I had to take it and the name of the class was Suffering. So I went to the class and, and he stood before the class and he basically said, I'm dying. I have a cancer which there is no cure. And he said, you know, I've gone through everything that you can think of. I've been angry at God. 
I've tried to bargain with God and say, God, you really need me. Come on, bring me that healing. I've gone through all those kind of things. And he said, you know what I came to realize? Is maybe God wants me to die well. And we were all like, what? What does that mean? He said, even despite the physical agony that I am in, that I can still love the Lord and point back to God and say, I will do everything that you have asked me to do and I will love you to the very, very end. I don't know the situation you're in, but will you love God to the very, very end? You know, I I, I said earlier that a lot of us are facing financial difficulties. Maybe you need that promotion, or maybe you need that job, or maybe you need that bank finally to budge. Maybe it's that family issue where there's a lack of trust or something's going on there. Or maybe it's the medical issue and you're just saying, well, how how do we get through this? Personally, I don't know the answer to that, but I know that God has the answer to that. But are you going to reach out and trust him? And you say, how in these circumstances am I supposed to have joy? I'm not saying you're supposed to be happy that you're suffering. But what I'm saying is that you're supposed to be joyful because you're blessed. Because God is on your side. As we wrap up today, I'm going to ask that the worship team come back. And I'm going to ask that you would pull up your your connection card. And as you pull out that connection card, if you'd flip that to the back. It lists some things there. It says, I am going to look at my trials with joy. I'm going to look at my trials as a reminder to rely on God's help and not my own. I'm going to look at my trials as an opportunity to grow spiritually. My son, Dominic, used to be about this big. He used to fit right here. You see, but God's plan was not for him to stay a baby. His plan was for for him to grow and to develop. Even though he had bumps along the way and he had to to kick and scream and learn how to roll over, to learn how to, to sit up, to learn how to crawl. All of those things were preparing him for what's next because you can't skip steps. And then all those things prepared him for now where he walks around our house and terrorizes everything. You see, God doesn't want you to stay like this. Unfortunately, some of us, when we've given our life to the Lord, we've stayed the little baby that fits right here. When God wants you to grow and he wants you to become big and strong. Imagine a place where Christians, no matter what they were facing, they loved the Lord with all their heart and they found joy no matter the circumstance and they were able to give praise to God. Do you just imagine what that would be at your work if you were dying or you were financially falling apart, but somehow you were able to give God the glory? They would look at you and think you're crazy. But then when they continued to see you do that, They would go, man, I don't know what they got, but I want that. I want that because I I can't do this on my own. You see, no matter what you're going through, it can be a testimony to other people. But it's all about how you respond, how you react. And if you reach out and say, Dad, I need your help, please help me. I'm going to ask that everybody would stand up, please, as we close. I'm going to ask that you would just close your eyes for a moment. If you're here today and you have never asked Jesus into your life to come in, forgive you of your sins, and wash you clean. If you're here today and you would like to make that decision to become a part of the family of Christ, I ask that you would just raise up your hand. 
Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Is there anybody else? God, we thank you for these two hands that were raised, Lord. We ask that you would just come in. Lord, bring the new beginning. If you're here today and you would say, you know what, I, I'm going through that financial difficulty, the impossibility. If that's you, I ask that you would just raise up your hand. Yeah. Is there anybody else? Yes. Yes. If you're here today, maybe it's a family issue. I ask that you would raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. You can put your hands down. Maybe you're here today and you got that phone call or you heard those words like cancer, disease, incurable. If that's you, I ask that you would raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. God, we need you. God, I pray that whatever the need is, Lord, that you would come in in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bring a new beginning. God, for the family issues, Lord, whether it's a trust issue between a spouse, God, I pray, Lord, that you would, you would bring reconciliation, Lord. If it's a child who is rebelling, Lord, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just restore trust and friendship. God, if it's a, a financial situation, Lord, I pray that that bank would finally budge. God, I pray that the, the promotion that is needed, God, would come. Or I pray that the job that has se seemed elusive, God, would finally be opened up. God, for the medical issues, Lord, that we are facing, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, because you are our healer. And God, we ask that you would just bring healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we know you're answering our prayers. If you're sitting on the left side, if you could reach down and, and grab that green bucket, and if you could pass that along and put that connection card in. That connection card is really important because it keeps us connected with what's going on in your life, the prayer requests, how we can be praying for you. If you raised your hand today to ask Jesus into your life, I'm going to ask that you would come forward. I'm going to ask that my prayer friends please come forward. If you raised your hand for any of those other things, please just don't leave today. Spend some time with the Lord. Say, God, I need you. I need you, Lord. For everybody else, we love you. Thank you so much for being here. Worship team is just going to continue in a time of worship. But please don't leave unless you've encountered God. God bless you all. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord. All creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here. In your presence I made whole. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. Yeah.